What's up guys, welcome back to the PLG helping video number two. And in this video, we are going to be covering the knowledge of normal approximation of binomial probability. So in this video, we are going to basically consider three things. Now, firstly, uh, we will do a quick revision of binomial distribution. And secondly, we will try to review why do we need this kind of normal approximation and how it works for the binomial probability. And lastly, again, as usual, we will take a sample question from past exam papers and illustrate how can we apply this knowledge in dealing with this kind of real life problem. Everyone happy with that? Okay, if you're ready, let's start in from the first one. Binomial distribution. Bino binomial, okay, binomial, yeah, yeah, this is right, right? Binomial distribution, you know it. Uh, binomial distribution. Well. What is binomial distribution? So if you still remember, the key thing about binomial distribution is that it, it is derived from what we call Bernoulli experiment. Bernoulli experiment. So, the Bernoulli experiment is a kind of experiment that has only two results, either success or fail. But actually, it's not necessarily to be a success, but uh, it can be male, female, or uh, like or dislike, or whatever, but we just define one of them to be success, okay? Uh, for example, if it is a female, we define it as success, and, you know, if it is a male, we define it as a, as a you know, a fail. So, uh, yeah. And then we define the probability of success, the probability of success to be a P, okay? So this is what we call the Bernoulli experiment. Then, a binomial random variable is actually created by repeating this kind of Bernoulli experiment for n times. So repeating a Bernoulli experiment for n times. And therefore, if we define x to be the number of successful trials, successful trials, then x, we say it, x follows a binomial distribution with uh, the number of trials n and the probability of succeed p. And we know that the PMF, or the probability mass function for a Bernoulli random variable is actually given by, okay, the probability of x equal to x equal to c, this is the choice, uh, I'm sorry, combination from, uh, from n trials in which we pick x and p to the power of x times 1 minus p to the power of uh, n minus x. So this is the PMF, which is when we calculate the exact probability, okay? And, uh, okay, in terms of uh, cumulative distribution function, it's just, for example, if we want to know the probability of x less than or equal to some x, then what we need to do is actually to get all the probabilities, or add up all the probabilities from p x equal to 0, x equal to 1, plus, blah, 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 plus probability of x equal to this specific x. And then we plug in 0, 1, and x inside this kind of function and try to work out the problem. So this is the cumulative density function of uh, a binomial distribution. So that's all the knowledge about uh, this binomial distribution. Okay, by the way, uh, hopefully you still remember the mean and variance of uh, the binomial variable, which is given by the expected value of x is what? Yes, np. And the variance of x is given by np times 1 minus p. Everyone happy with that? Okay, so this is a knowledge about binomial distribution, and hopefully you all know it, otherwise you will never survive the final exam, because those are the very basic things that you need to grasp. Now, let's think about why we need this kind of normal approximation of binomial probability. Well, the problem is, let's go back and look at P and F. We've got C and X here, right? So in, in the C and X, there is something like, uh, uh, what is that? It should be, um, it should be N, the factorial of N divided by Oh my god, I can't remember exactly. Uh, it should be um, n minus x minus 1 factorial times um, x factorial. Well, suppose that I'm right, okay? I just suppose I am right, all right? n minus x plus 1 or minus. I can't remember exactly, but it doesn't matter, okay? Just see what the formula is from your lecture slides, okay? But my point here is that look at this factorial of n. So what if we got a 1,000 trials? Okay, 1,012. So what is the factorial of 1,000? Let's try this on the calculator, okay? 1,000, and then get the factorial of it. So factorial, uh, where is factorial? Oh, it's here, factorial. And let's see. Oh my god, math error. What does it mean by math error? It basically means that it's too large to show on this calculator, okay? Or it's out of the capability of this calculator. <laughs> Therefore, we can see the problem if we want to have a 1,000 trials, it's impossible for us to really calculate this probability by hand. And not mention this kind of accumulating probability, right? So what should we do? Well, let's see. The diagram of PMF is actually very beautiful. It looks like uh, this. 
It's very like a bell shaped, okay? So as we increase the number of trials, which is n, we can expect it to be more like a bell shaped curve, which is normal distribution, right? Exactly. So if n is very, very large, we can never calculate this kind of excellent things using a, a, you know, a normal probability mass function of binomial distribution. Therefore, we can turn it into a normal distribution question, okay? So let's set up the scenario. If x denotes the number of successful trials, then this x, which follows binomial uh, np, and if x meet the condition of np greater than 5, or n times 1 minus p greater than 5, but some students is concerning whether we should put equal signs here, I think it doesn't really matter, okay? Uh, because np must much greater than 5 to, to use this, okay? There's no you know, precise answer to, in, in terms of these things. So it doesn't matter whether there is an equal sign here. So um, if these conditions are met, then we can see x can be approximated by a normal distribution distribution. And if we denote this normal variable by y, and then this y follows a normal np and np times 1 minus p. So are you familiar with all of those? Exactly, those are the mean and variance of this binomial distribution, right? So it's, you know, without any concerns, we know that the mean must equal to the mean of this binomial distribution, and the variance must equal to the variance of this binomial distribution. All right. So, if we know this, there are actually two kinds of two sets of applications on this kind of approximation. The first one is get the bin, calculate the binomial probability using this normal approximation, and the second one is actually to know the sampling distribution of the uh, of the sample proportion. Do you remember that? Uh, hopefully, you still remember. Okay. So, what we're going to cover today is the normal approximation of binomial probability. Okay. So, if you want to get the probability of x, for example, less than x, and this can be approximated by the probability of this normal variable y less than, we know that this is a uh, this is a continuous distribution, right? So we can never use this kind of equal sign. Oh, it doesn't matter whether we have this equal sign. But we need to pay attention. If it is less than or equal x, we need to have x plus 0 0.5 as the adjustment. Why it works in this way? Let's see. Let's just, uh, you know, amplify, for example, this part of the diagram, okay? So we got uh, this large uh, or this huge diagram and suppose that this value is x okay and we know that this is approximated by a normal distribution or a you know a continuous distribution therefore if we want to get the probability of le x less or that less than or equal to x we need to add up all those squares is that right to the left hand side of x okay so all those squares add up together we get this probability now let's see how can we approximate this using a normal probability well, let's see. In terms of x, if we get the probability of y less than x, let's see what are the probabilities, okay? So for example, this one is made up by this one, and this one made up by this one, but we only get a probability that is less than x, or this, under this shadow, right? Under this shadow, to the left-hand side of x. But what is missing? We're missing half of this bar, is that right? Yes, exactly. So, what we are choosing to do is actually use, we know that this value must be x plus 1, right? Therefore, what we can actually do is we use x plus 0 0.5 as approximation to make this approximation more precise. Okay, can you see that? So by adding up probably this half of the bar, and then we make this approximation. Well, when we say this approximation, it's never precise, right? But we just want it to be more precise. That's why we approximate it by the y less than x plus 0 0.5, okay? Now, let's make the, um, let's summarize all the possibilities. For example, what about the probability of x less than x? How can it be approximated? Exactly, it should be y less than what? x minus 0 0.5, because x less than x actually means the probability of x less than or equal to x minus 1, right? So, if it's less, x less than or equal to x, then this value will not include x, so it's just x minus 1 plus 0 0.5, which is just x less than, uh, sorry, x minus 0 0.5, okay? The similar things can be derived for x greater or equal to x, this will be approximated by y greater than what? x minus 0 0.5 because x value is included therefore we just we also need to include uh, this value in this approximation okay the last one the probability of x greater than x can be approximated by the probability of y uh, greater than x plus 0 0.5 everyone happy with that okay so that's all about application of the normal approximation of binomial probability well one more thing we probably consider is uh, well this is the first 
uh, application of uh, this kind of uh, approximation. And the second application is quite uh, is quite um, uh, quite useful, especially in our uh, sampling distribution of the sample proportion. Hopefully, you still remember. Uh, so this one follows a NP NP times one minus P distribution, right? Which means our sample size is n here. Therefore, if we divide it by n on y, we know that this is exactly our p hat, which is our sample proportion. And this guy will follow the normal. So we divide by n here, we know that this will turn out to have a p here. And we divide by n on its variance, exactly divided by n squared. So we got p times 1 minus p divided by n. So this is exactly our central limit theorem for the sample proportion. Okay, so those are the two kinds of uh, applications on this. Uh, on this kind of approximation. And uh, the condition is NP greater than 5 and N times 1 minus P also greater than 5. Now, let's have a quick look at on the application of the first, uh, of the first uh, application here <laughs> using a sample question. Now, let's look at this question together. It says, Citibank Australia is a credit card issuer in Australia. Yeah, it is. And it uses a credit score card to determine whether or not a credit card application will be approved. So according to an internal document, wow, internal document of the credit card department, 60% of the applicants have been successful. So what do you think? 60%. All right. So 60% is uh, actually um, the population proportion, P, right? And on a particular business day during a promotion period, 300 applicants are received. So for each of the applicants, there are 60% to be successful and 40% to be failed. Now we repeat this kind of Bernoulli experiment for 300 times. This is a relatively large number, right? Therefore, it requires using the normal approximation to the binomial probabilities, find the probability between 175 and 200 applicants inclusive are successful. So what do you guys think? Definitely, uh, this number of successful follows a binomial distribution, right? Therefore, we firstly let x be the number of, uh, of successful applicants, okay? Applicants. All right, so if let x be this kind of things, we know that x must follow what? Follows a binomial distribution with n equal to 300 and p equal to what? Equal to probably 60%, which is 0 0.6. Everyone happy with that? Okay. Now, um, you are asked to calculate the 175 to 200 applicants that are successful. Do you think it's calculatable using, you know, using our own hands or calculator? It's nearly impossible because we need to calculate C300, 175. Well, that's okay, but we need to add up from 175 to 200, these 26 probabilities, right? So it's really hard to perform this calculation using your hand. Therefore, we are going to apply the normal approximation of binomial probability instead. So, let's see. Um, let's check the condition. What is NP then? NP equal to 300 times 6 to 0 0.6, which is 120. This is greater than 5. N times 1 minus P, which is N uh, 300 times, uh, sorry, this is 0 0.6, sorry, not no person, sorry about that. And 300 times 0 0.4, which is 120, which is also greater than 5. And therefore, we are very happy to say that the X can be approximated by a normal distribution, which is X can be approximated by a normal distribution, right? A normal distribution. Uh, for example, y. And y is normal distribution, and the mean should be NP. So NP is 180, and uh, the variance is NP times 1 minus P, which is, uh, let's see, NPN is 300 times P, 0 0.6 times 0 0.4. It should be uh, 72. So the variance is 72. Therefore, we can easily work out the probability. So if we want to find the probability of x greater than or equal to 175, 200 can be approximated by what? The probability of y less than what? 200.5 or 199.5. Exactly. We have equal sign here, so we will include 200, which make it 200.5. And what about this side? We also include 175 on this side. Therefore, we need to make it what? Exactly, we need to make it uh, to be um, to be 174.5, which is less or, or sorry, minus 0 0.5 on this side, okay? And now it's just for us to calculate the normal probability, or you can choose to standardize it, which is y minus uh, 180 divided by square root of 72 would be less than 200.5 uh, minus, uh, minus 180 divided by square root of 72 greater than uh, 174.5 minus, uh, oh my god, 180 divided by the square root of 72. Uh, this is so disgusting. So this guy becomes z, right? Standard normal, so we can just let, let x be this guy and let z, for example, z to be a, a standard normal distribution, okay? We need to define every single letter we use in the question, right? Okay, so if this is z, and we just calculate this number here, yeah. okay, it's finally, it turns out to be uh, 200.5 minus 180, and then divided by the square root of 72, we got roughly 2.42, um, 
right? 2.42, the probability of uh, z less than 2.42 minus the probability of z less than, let's see, it's uh, 175, uh, sorry, 174.5 minus 180 equal, and then divided by square root of 72, and we got minus 0 0.65, so minus 0 0.65. Now, therefore, we can easily find out those probabilities in the statistical table, so I will not perform this calculation, and I will leave all those calculations in your own time, okay? But anyway, we can find out, we can approximate this probability using a uh, normal distribution, right? But definitely, this is a kind of, you know, a, a binomial distribution question. All right, that's all for today's video. So in this video, we learned the normal approximation of binomial probability. We review some basic knowledge about binomial distribution, which is just the repeating for n times of the Bernoulli experiment, which has a probability of success to be p. So the mean and variance of this kind of uh, binomial distribution is np and np times 1 minus p. And we also get a pmf and cef of it. And we know that this number is very hard to calculate or it's impossible to calculate if, uh, you know, if uh, we have a large number of trials for n. Therefore, we choose to use uh, this kind of normal approximation as long as np greater than 5 and n times 1 minus p also greater than 5. And we know this kind of probability can be approximated by, by, by y if y follows the normal distribution with the same uh, mean and same variance, it can be approximated by y less than, uh, just make some little bit adjustment over here. So never forget this kind of adjustments, okay? And this is why we need to do the adjustments. And finally, we use this past exam question to illustrate how can we apply the approx normal approximation of binomial probability. And we know that the key things that you need to pay attention on is that you need to uh, adjust for 0 0.5 on all the bonds, uh, all the bounds of this probability when you do the approximation. All right, that's all for today's video. If you like it, please click the like button. If you dislike, don't click the dislike button. And if you want more video from us, please subscribe our PLG University of Sydney video channel. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.